We now know more about the grammar of probability, how to talk about probability. So next, let me offer a gentle introduction to the mathematics of probability. Let's start by what symbol we're going to use to represent probability. The symbol for probability is the lowercase p. I'm using samples here, so I'm going to use a lowercase p. However, if we were using population values, we would probably use an uppercase p. What matters for right now is that you understand that probability is represented by p. And we would write the event that we're describing in parentheses. For instance, the probability of event A occurring is 0.58. Or the probability for rain is 0 0.90. We might also say that there's a 90% chance of rain. There are different ways of describing the formula for probability. I'm going to use one that I think is simple, and we'll also explore other ways of notation. My formula is P equals D over T, where D equals your desired outcomes, your successes, and T equals the total possible number of outcomes. The D part, the numerator, is usually the easiest one to determine because we can look at that through observation. The denominator is the tough one. Finding the total number of possible occurrences can be difficult. If I wanted to know how many car accidents you have been in in your life, that would probably be relatively simple for you to answer because those are the kind of things that stick in your mind. But how many almost car accidents have you avoided? What is the total number of times where you could have been in a car accident, but were not? That's going to be much more difficult to come up with because we don't have ready access to things that didn't happen. So now I want to explore using this formula with a simple example. In a box in the back of your professor's office, you discover a nest of mice. There are 20 male and 30 female mice. A total of 50. Of the 20 males, 15 are white, 5 are spotted. Of the 30 females, 15 are white, 15 are spotted. And you decide to pick one up at random to go show everyone else. First of all, what is the total number of outcomes? Well, we add together the total number of mice. There's 20 males, 30 females. The total number is 50. What is the probability of obtaining a female? Our desired outcome or success would be one of the 30 female mice divided by the total of 50, which gives us 0 0.60. What is the probability of obtaining a white male? Well, of the males, 15 are white. That will be our, our numerator. And still the denominator will be 50. The math, 0.30. Are you more likely to obtain a spotted female or a spotted male? To answer this, we're going to do some comparisons. We'll have to calculate both probabilities and see which one is larger. The one with the larger probability is more likely. There are 15 spotted females. There are five spotted males. Again, both of these numbers will be divided by 50. So. 15 divided by 50 is 0 0.30. 5 divided by 50 is 0 0.10. It is more likely that if you pick a mouse at random, you would obtain a spotted female. Let's do something similar, only this time with numbers. Now we have a data set. In this bag are individual numbers, like a 5. Let's see how probability applies here. Here's your data set. What is the total number of possible outcomes? There are 10 possible outcomes. There are 10 values, 10 numbers in the bag. I am going to reach into the bag, pull out a number among the 10 possible numbers, and I got a 4. So let's answer some questions with probability. What is the probability of choosing a 4? There are three 4s in our data set. 3 divided by 10 is 0 
What is the probability of choosing a number greater than four? Now we're not interested in the specific number, just whether it is greater than a specified number. In this case, five and six are both greater than four. There are two numbers greater than four. The probability, 0.20. What is the probability of choosing a number greater than two? There are seven numbers greater than two. Therefore, the probability, 0.70. What is the probability of choosing either a one or a three? There are two ones and two threes for a total of four possible successes, the probability being 0.40. And what is the probability of choosing an even number? We look through our data set. We have two, four, four, and four, six. That is a total of five even numbers. The probability, 0 0.50. Now that you know a little bit about the mathematics of calculating probabilities, let's learn more about interpreting probabilities. Probability will always be expressed as a decimal. The lowest value that decimal can take on is 0. The highest value is 1. Probabilities near 0 indicate that an event is very unlikely to occur. A probability of 0.5, right in the middle, means that the event is equally likely as not. And as probabilities approach 1, that event is almost certain to occur. The probability of winning a coin flip, 0 0.50. The probability of rolling a six on a six-sided fair die would be 0.166 on the low end of the scale. The probability of winning the lottery could be millions to one. Very, very close to zero, but not at zero. Probabilities of zero cannot occur. Probabilities near zero are very unlikely to occur. There are some basic rules about interpreting probabilities. Probabilities of zero or one are called certainties. They don't require probability because we know that they either will or will not occur. All individual probabilities must be a value between zero and one. And collectively, all of the probabilities must add up to one. The probability of heads 0.5, the probability of tails, 0.5. Collectively, they add up to 1. You may also hear the non-zero probability. A non-zero probability means that a likelihood is possible without actually confirming how likely it is. So you may hear someone describing a very unlikely event as a non-zero probability. There's a non-zero probability this will happen, which means that it's unlikely, but we're not saying that it's impossible or it could not ever occur.